one that year is All Ireland. Paddy is back, having travelled from uh, Crossmaglen in County Armagh. It's Cork who play from right to left, as I was mentioning in the first half. The breeze is behind them. And straight away, I noticed that Kevin O'Driscoll has got into midfield alongside Alan O'Connor. And we'll see in just a few minutes once the throw in and once the game settles down, settles down, what exactly they have changed in terms of the shape in which they're going to confront this obvious carry challenge. Straight away it was Brian Sheehan hitting it in there and a couple of sweepers waiting for it. One of them was Michael Shields and Cork get their hands on the ball and Paul Kerrigan straight away tries to influence matters from the middle of the park. Mark Collins has already come back out into the centre. That's Cadigan playing it down. Back to Mark Collins once again, hit with a good shoulder and then there was a leg trip there on Donica Walsh free kick which David Moran is preparing to take opening 30 seconds of this latest Munster Championship match the final of 2015 the 125th 25th ever Munster final taking it back here is Mark O'Shea Kerry pressing looking for the first opening Barry John Keane immediately swallowed up by three players one of them there is Stephen Cronin getting his hands on the ball early on. That'll do his confidence some good. Back there is Brian Hurley. They've two men in the inside forward line. And one of them was Donnick O'Connor. The other was Colm O'Neill. Neither managed to get it. Brian Sheehan again. Back out here onto the wing. Kicked ahead well. Nice play here by James O'Donoghue taking on his man, who is James Lockery. And stripped of the football, helped out there by Paul Kerrigan. Back out as far as Brian O'Driscoll. Cork withstanding the first advance as a Kerry player down injured. I think, I think it is James O'Donoghue. Play continues. Michael Shields pushed in the back that time by Kieran Donoghue. Yeah, what's very noticeable, Ger, is that Cork are playing two sweepers. Fenton Gould is back there, and on top of that, Michael Shields has gone out centre half back. Uh, Paul Kerrigan is also playing as a sweeper. If you're not a sweeper, you don't get in this team. Colm O'Neill trying to get it onto his left. Back here as far as Mark Collins. Little block on it, should be the goalkeepers. And Brendan Keeley able to take control of that and has plenty of backs to pick out. One of them here is Killian Young. So many cork sweepers. There are bound to be extra carry players at the back. And from their own half, they move forward with some menace here. Donica Walsh going down, second time he's been fouled. Setting one up here, one against two, Donaghy the target. Touches it down, but only to the other captain, the core captain, Shields. Back out through Stephen Cronin. Here's Barry O'Driscoll. Probably much more noted as a half-forward, even a quarter-forward. That's where he played last year in the final in Porky Cueve. Here's Kevin O'Driscoll, one of three O'Driscolls in the panel, two of them starting. Mark Collins. Brian Hurley now. Chip down for Colm O'Neill to try and make the most of. Being challenged by Mark O'Shea. And Mark O'Shea does really well. Good play by the 35-year-old. Out as far as Donica Walsh once again under pressure. Jonathan Lyon taking it up. Oh, just about retaining it here. Gas from the Kerry crowd. They thought they had turned it over. James O'Donoghue happily recovered from a knock earlier on. Stephen O'Brien. Looking for the first scoring opportunity for either team. O'Brien goes through, darting, getting it onto the left. Not his best. Very well wide of the target. Yeah, he showed fabulous pace that time, ran at the Cork defence. Unfortunately, of his left foot, he miscued it completely. But Cork have started this very, uh, very impressively. And again, they're, they're determined to strangle the Kerry defence by putting back numbers. Shields outside of the boot, allowed to run on there by Donico O'Connor, but he's uh, got an extra marker back there to contend with, and that's Mark O'Shea, calm as you like. Killian Young now. Cork determined not to create or leave the kind of openings that were there in Porky Queen last year when there was a big, huge gap between the Cork full back line and basically the Cork midfield. Kerry exploited it brilliantly on that occasion. Barry John Keane. Inside here for O'Brien. Second foray. This time loses it, holds on too long. Free out to Cork. Polly Hughes called that certainly is a free out. I thought myself he might have got a free in initially, but the referee is quite, um, you know, 
uh, a loath play to go on so far and then um, free out came. I think both teams are just getting used to the refereeing here now. What is allowed, what is not allowed, and we're only inside the opening five minutes. I agree, that would have been a free from any another referee. Here's Owen Cadigan striding forward here. Sheehan comes across to try and block him off. Gets it in here smartly to Brian Hurley and the referee saw some holding and it's going to be a free in. Referee has blown his whistle. Was that advantage taken quickly? Now some confusion. The referee's whistle certainly did sound. Cork played on and for a moment you're wondering whether or not that was the referee allowing them the quick advantage? Well, I thought myself the referee had allowed Cork the quick advantage that time, but when nothing accrued, he has brought back the ball to where the initial foul occurred, and I think actually he might be just taking note of one of the uh, Kerry players' numbers. Peter Crowley was the one he was having a word with. Mark O'Shea went out to check as well. The referee has now gone in to have another word with a couple of players, Fionn Fitzgerald, one of them. Actually, he did allow the free to be taken quickly, and I think a 45 resulted from it. And this is where Colm O'Neill has the opportunity to put this first ball over the Kerry crossbar. Light breeze behind him now. Catches it. But, uh, yes, it is over. Dropped inside the right-hand post, clearly. First point of the match credited to Colm O'Neill from the 45. Yeah, that's beautiful technique that time. Struck the ball excellently. Now, it must be said, he has a nice breeze behind him. Brendan Keeley kicking it out into the middle of the park where Kerry were so dominant 12 months ago. But Alan O'Connor has come back from the St. Columns Club in West Cork. Brian Hurley. You wouldn't be expecting Brian Hurley to be one of the players out there in the middle of the park at this stage. Brian O'Driscoll kicked in by Donnick O'Connor. One man inside. That's Colm O'Neill. And marking him there is Mark O'Shea. And O'Shea has won the duel so far between the two of those boys. Peter Crowley out as far as Stephen O'Brien. Kerry playing slightly dangerously, however, just leaving it one-on-one -on -one there because I'm expecting Mark O'Shea, great and all the player as he is, to match up with Colm O'Neill each time and to beat him each time. Kicked forward by David Moran. Waiting for it was Barry John Keane. In stepped 19-year-old Stephen Cronin. Barry O'Driscoll helping out. Paul Kerrigan back there. Back to Cronin once again. Teammates, of course, at Nemo Rangers. Out to Michael Shields, team captain. And again, the referee has blown his whistle. Yes, what, hap uh, what happened that time, actually, there was a double hop by the uh, Cork defender coming out. But Cronin has gone back on Barry John Keane from wing back, doing a one-on-one -on, -one on him. Last weekend, I believe, in the trial game, Keane got eight points from play, and that actually was one of the factors that contributed to Cooper being left off, who didn't play particularly well in that trial match. Two uh, bounces, as you say, there by Michael Shields, so giving an opportunity for Brian Sheehan to put this one over, hitting into the breeze, however. Playing at his 56th championship match this afternoon. He scored 40 points against uh, Kerry in 15 championship matches up to now, hoping to make it 41. Not with this particular effort, the breeze didn't help him, however, and it's Owen Cadigan who reached up for it. And this breeze is such today that uh, the team with it will be hoping to be at least three points up at half-time, I'd imagine. Stephen Cronin has players away on the far side free. Alan O'Connor, one of them. Hitting it long, down towards Donico O'Connor. Kicking it on again to Mark Collins, moving smartly here. Pursuing him there, Peter Crowley. Right on the end line, opportunity to create something here. Donico O'Connor... Injury kept him out last year, and this one's at the back of the net by Colm O'Neill. Dream start for Cork. Goal after nine minutes. Kerry exposed big time. Exposed big time, it must be said, Ger, but the initial ball that went across, there was a slight deflection on it. Great vision, it must be said, by O'Connor. And coming in very, very smartly, Colm O'Neill put it to the net. That is a wonderful start for Cork, it must be said. Well, it's his fourth ever championship goal and a goal and a point, as you can see, today for the Ballyclaw player. So Kerry realising straight away that Cork mean business and they have a big challenge on their hands. Jonathan Lyon getting it forward as far as Donica Walsh, surrounded immediately and the eagerness is being shown by Brian Cuthbert's team. That time, referee gives the free kick Kerry's way. David Moran, what a great 
season he had last year, that semi-final replay in Limerick, still remembered all those touches, 47 touches in that game against Mayo. So they build methodically here, a bit slowly, a bit laboriously. And Cork, the reason for that, because of the number of bodies back there, and Ker Kerry so far can't find a way through. This time there is a foul, and this time there is a free kick. Yes, I think Buckley's arm was being held that time as he tried to kind of execute the pass. But Cork will be very happy with their start. The fact that Kerrigan in particular, his role has surprised me. He's gone back very much as a sweeper and tries to get forward when they attack and make the extra man. It'll be Brian Sheehan who will take it, but the referee's saying to him, take it back a metre or so. So he is about 46, 47 metres from the target. This is his second shot. Looking for a point here. Kerry scoreless after 10 and a half minutes. They need a point just to boost the confidence a little bit. Just to reassure themselves. On the winning, time eight, winning team eight times against Cork in the past. And he hope it will be a night today. He's got his first point of the match. Well hit free from a long distance out in tricky conditions. So 1-1 one, one to a point. Yes, but the technique is so solid. The timing, the beautiful follow-through with the kick. It's the reason he's on the, on the, on the, on the team rather at midfield. Many people thought Maher might be there, but certainly there's no doubt about it. Sheen deserves his place. Cork winning their own kick out here, and it was a problem last year. Barry O'Driscoll checking, trying to get back inside Stephen O'Brien. And O'Brien is a very sticky competitor. That time he reached in and the referee decided he fouled. He didn't agree. Let's see, was there much in this? He certainly was holding him as he tried to get past him that time. But the tactical thing, actually, of the three cork forwards inside is working. Donico O'Connor kicking. Dropping it short, however, Brendan Keeley. David Moran standing in front of him. And out to the left, Donico Walsh. Now loads and loads of room. Nobody at all on him. Hurley's trying to make up the, the ground here. Did well enough. Back out again towards Shane Enright now. First touch for him. Stephen O'Brien has been involved. James O'Donoghue. Lockery, his marker for the day. Can he get the better of it? Poor ball inside here because Stephen Cronin was standing in the right position and the ball is taken and put in the back of the net by Donaghy. An error at the back. It should have been cleared and Donaghy pounced and he's got goal number 13 in a very fine championship career and the teams are level how many times have we seen that sure a bit ponderous in defense Cork were that time i think it was uh, michael shields ball came to donaghy and fin finishes expertly oh well, they have shot themselves in the foot that time cork back to level pegging shields kicking it down lost by colin o'neill regained by mark o'shea up here as far as Stephen O'Brien. Well, they were in complete control of that situation, Cork. They had loads of options to get that ball away, and they made an absolute hames of it. Stephen O'Brien looking now to try and put Kerry in front for the first time. Johnny Buckley kicking it in towards Donaghy. Loads of players against him. He got a touch. Put it wide, however. Yes, just going back to the goals, it must be said, Ger, I just thought in the first place, Lahiri was far too uh, loose. Uh, I think it was on uh, O'Donoghue coming through. And just look at, uh, Shields was ponderous coming out with the ball. Great tackling by the Kerry, uh, by the Kerry attack. And Donaghy, we saw that last year. Remember the goal he got against Donegal? Just alert and finishes expertly. Kieran Donaghy, team captain, of course, by virtue of uh, Austin Stack's marvellous victory last autumn. Well, that will settle Eamon Fitzmaurice, the selectors and the team down a good deal. Third year in charge, gloriously successful last year, of course. Well, that is uh, Brian O'Driscoll, who was down injured. 21-year-old UCC student, and really, Brian Cuthbert, it had gone so well for his team. An elementary error by some of his players at the back, a simple passing error, leaving Donaghy in with a chance to pounce. Well, he's OK from uh, Kahara, which is in West Cork. This time a shorter kick out straight to Shields, who was anticipating. They've uh, obviously rehearsed that. Down by a fin to Gould now. Carrying it on here is Kevin O'Driscoll. Two men after him. Can't catch him. Playing in his first Munster final. Kicking this one. And kicking it over the bar as well. 
Well, his brother was the injured player a little while ago. We saw getting treatment, and this is Kevin O'Driscoll getting his first ever score in the championship, and he's done it to put Cork back in front in Killarney. But that's all done to a very, very clever kick out. Good work up along the wing then, and O'Driscoll struck the ball excellently from a difficult enough angle. Shane Enright. Moran keeps it short. Killian Young. Changing the direction of the attack now with Brian Sheehan. Opportunity to plough through the centre. Various players peeling off right and left. Going towards James O'Donoghue, the obvious target. It's from here that the goal came, remember. Cast aside the challenge of Lockery, which wasn't a particularly good one. Back into Barry John Keane. Paul Ganey will be a player, I'm sure, would be wondering why he's not on that starting 15. He's among the subs, but then so many good players are. And this time, Stephen O'Brien, once again, a judge to have held on too long. That's happened before. Free is awarded against him, and he is a little frustrated even in these early minutes. 15 and a half minutes are gone. Paul Kerrigan, first of the live matches here in the Sunday game this afternoon, coming to you from Sonny Killarney. One of the most picturesque venues in the country, and of course at 4 o'clock, the Leinster hurling final. An eagerly awaited match between Kilkenny and Galway, and that's a high challenge by Johnny Buckley, swinging his man around there. Two big men in action here in competition, Owen Cadigan and Johnny Buckley. And the referee out with the notebook. And uh, the colour of the card is going to be, what, yellow? Should be. Yeah, I thought it should be all right. I don't think it was a deliberate pull down. It must be deliberate if you're to get the black card. That time he just happened to get him around the neck, and it was a pull down okay, but a yellow card I think was the correct decision. Brian O'Driscoll. Don he goes after him. Boosted by the goal he got a little while ago. O'Driscoll again here, back to Cadigan. Now they try to make some advances. First one is down towards Fintan Gould, who made a run off his marker, who's Jonathan Lyne, played it back to Barry O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll now almost into a cul-de-sac here. Can he get himself out of this blind alley? He needs a support player, has it in Fintan Gould, penned in in that sector of uh, Fitzgerald Stadium. Mark Collins was the target, but they overdid it. Gave away possession and now given away the line ball. The linesman down there, Rory Hickey, trying to... Make sure the ball is returned quickly. It was wonderful defending that time. I think, I think it was by Peter Crowley, the way he dispossessed him and again forced the ball out over the line of, of the Cork attacker. But great defending by Crowley. John Fitzgerald then, been told to bring the ball forward. I think it's ended up being a free kick because uh, Mark Collins didn't retreat quickly enough and uh, the referee penalised Cork. Brian Sheehan. James who again losing his marker and the pass is pinpoint accurate. who menacing as always, kicking his first point of this Munster final. The man who destroyed Cork last year with 12 points in Porky Queen goes this way and that against James Lockery who's having a very tough time that's the third time Lockery has been far to loosen him great movement it must be said off the ball by O'Donoghue uh, to get into a position to receive the pass but his skill in taking on Lockery delightful and a very emphatic finish so level for the second time Alan O'Connor catching but uh, against a couple of Kerry men one of them was David Moore and the other is Brian Sheehan and once again Sheehan meaning business all of a sudden, Kerry have just turned it on, helped by that goal, no doubt. But now they're beginning to play with a bit more expression. Back to Buckley. Kicking through the ball, kicking high, and kicking it over the bar. First of the day. Kerry lead here. I think it's one of the loveliest skills to see in Gaelic football, is quality kicking from distance. That time Buckley didn't see anything inside, backed himself, had the confidence to strike it from the outside of the boot, and just got the curl perfect. Lovely score from Buckley, who normally does an awful lot of thankless and unseen work around the middle. Well, Kerry now have settled to the task, and they realise exactly how Cork are set up, and the likelihood also is that Cork are saying to themselves, are we going to continue with this kind of structure, which has a couple of sweepers at the back? Paul Kerrigan breaking fast, he's got the pace to do that. Very talented player. Down to another very gifted player, Brian Hurley. Hurley got eight points against Kerry in the league last year, 2014 in Tralee. 
go this way and that, this time against Shane Enright, but almost losing it, but then his hand was held, he's got a free in, did well. Did well, but that's an unnecessary free to be conceded by the Kerry defence. Hurley was going nowhere, and that's one of the, back, uh, I, I suppose, difficulties of playing a sweeper system, is that when you attack, you have little support up there. Hurley was running into a blind alley that time, and Kerry should have been that little bit more disciplined in the tackle. It's going to be uh, Donico O'Connor who will kick this one from 13 metres. The referee's gone down into the middle of the field because there's a need for a temporary substitute because Alan O'Connor, I think, has got some blood on the face being attended to over there by Conor Lane. Dr. Con Murphy there as well, just to attend to him. And a temporary sub may have to be brought in. Don't see anybody coming on just yet. And they're preparing. That's Rory Dean. You might remember him. He had uh, he came on as a temporary sub last year. Let's just watch this first. And that one is kicked with care by Donald O'Connor over the bar. Rory Dean came on as a temporary sub last year, was on for a short while, got a horrible knee injury. The game was held up for about three minutes at the time. That's the foul there on Hurley, which resulted in the free kick. Paddy Kelly has come on. Or pa, as they call him. That's the second time actually Potty Hughes has called for freeze or blown for freeze rather for uh, you know for situations when the ball was in the air when there's a little bit of pushing off the ball. So level once again as uh, Peter Crowley goes forward, confronted this time by Barry O'Driscoll, gets the support here of Donica Walsh again summing up just what's available to him. Jonathan Lyme, one of those two great points he got against Mayo in that classic game in Limerick last year. Donica Walsh bouncing it in front of Brian O'Driscoll. Onto it comes James O'Donoghue running into trouble. But has the composure to hold on, to look forward. Look at the eyes, just looking across the goal there to see who's moving, what's on for him. Nothing on that occasion. Johnny Buckley got a point a moment to go. The target once again is Donaghy. Why not if you've got a big, tall man in there? And that's a high head eye challenge, and that is pretty deliberate by Paul Kerrigan as the other number 10, Stephen O'Brien, was going through. And the decision here is going to be an interesting one. Very much so. Wonderful anticipation that time. Two defenders went up with Buckley, but just watch this, uh, with Donny rather, but watch that. That looks at least to be a black card. It certainly is black card territory, as they say. And I'm sure Paul Kerrigan is fearing the worst as Owen Cadigan there on the right-hand side is playing advocate. James O'Donoghue wants to uh, get rid of him. The referee wants to get rid of everybody and just to deal with Paul Kerrigan, first of all. Yeah, it's a black card. It had to be, it had to be at least, because that time it was, you know, deliberate. It was a pull-down, in fact, just another yard, and it would have been a penalty. Well, now this means trouble for Cork because he's got the pace. He was fulfilling a role there at the back, which was successful. They've now lost him. Have they got the replacement? Their bench is not as strong as Kerry's, that's for sure. And not alone that, he was the one that was given the responsibility of acting as sweeper. He was doing it very effectively until that ill-disciplined tackle. And the person who comes in now will have to do the same role. Brian Sheehan kicking to put Kerry back in front again with his second pointed free. No problems whatsoever. I think he's got uh, two out of three so far. Kevin O'Driscoll is the target, he's done well in the middle of the field here. Player with uh, not an awful lot of experience, had a good league campaign. Well, they all had, I suppose, up to that day when they met Dublin and really did not perform. Colm O'Neill. Pa Kelly is the one now who's going to stay on. Alan O'Connor is back on as well. And this is Pa Kelly. Star in 2010, had a lot of injuries. Back here to Brian Hurley, kicking, kicking smartly, but not with accuracy. Well, that time, Hurley missed a wonderful opportunity to feed, I think it was, uh, coming up on the wing, I think it was Stephen Cronin, should have fed the ball, to, or rather it was uh, the other O'Driscoll, Barry O'Driscoll, should have been given the pass, and there was a clear route to goals had he, had he received the ball. Second year in charge for Brian Cuthbert, of course. His team has been blitzed, uh, were blitzed in midfield last year, but today would have been happy enough up to the concession of the goal as to how they started here. 
now falling into arrears, a point behind, early stages, Killian Young, David Moran, against Alan O'Connor, O'Connor is unable to get any kind of tackle in on him that time, and Moran misses his chance, one of the game's top performers last season. Had a brilliant season, it must be said, last year. And again, just watch the, the variation and kick-out have today, uh, that Cork had today. I think it's working quite well for them. Well, their short passes at the back got them into trouble for the goal. And now they've got to try and get themselves outside their own 20-metre line. There's a lot of work to do. Barry O'Driscoll, Kerry trying to pen them back. They break the press, however, and Michael Shields, with Donica Walsh trying to keep up with him. In here to Pa Kelly. One of the stars of Cork's victory in 2010 in the All-Ireland series. Mark Collins, back to O'Driscoll once again. This is Kevin, 25 years of age. Johnny Buckley shadows him. He gets by that first challenge. Then it's Moran, almost lost his balance, retains possession somehow. In comes Donegal O'Connor, and then he's challenged roughly. And the referee has blown his whistle and given a free into Cork and is playing the uh, United Nations peacekeeper role. Yeah, for a guy who has very little experience at this level, Kevin O'Driscoll has started very well. He's shown good pace, go good composure on the ball, and a willingness to take on the Kerry defence, and they've showed a little bit of panic at times in their defence, and that's certainly given Cork the opportunity to, you know, to get scores from freeze. You'd want to be careful, Brian Sheehan, lashing out like that, because if the referee took a, another view to it, there could be cards issued. I think there may be in this, in this case, actually. Just see for a moment. No, he's just ticking his number and noting his number, rather. Mark O'Shea still having a word with the referee. Meanwhile, it's uh, Colm O'Neill. It's team 1-4 to 1-3 behind. He's got uh, a goal after nine minutes. So from 30 metres out, suits a left-footed kicker, and he's one of the best around. Teams are level for the fourth time. Well, the scores have come from uh, 45 meter free and uh, that close in free as well you saw there and uh, Brian Cuthbert I think happy enough Even Fitzmaurice wants to maintain this wonderful record that Kerry have here in the championship that's out as far as Killian Young that he was met by Kevin O'Driscoll a bit clumsy Brian Sheehan looking around trying to make the easy pass does so with Peter Crowley available and Jonathan Lyon from Kalani Legion on home territory virtually. Barry John Keane fouled. Hasn't really got into the game all that much so far, Barry John Keane. No, he's been well marked by Stephen Cronin. It's interesting now, the sweeper role for Cork has been played or given to Mark Collins, who's back in front of Donaghy. Well, that is a role he's very used to, Martin, because he, he during Conor Cunahan's time, they experimented with the, the sweeper system, and Mark Collins was the obvious one. He's such a good move, he's got good hands, very intelligent player. His dad, Francis, was a, a wonderful hurler with the Cork hurlers. Played for Black Rock. It'll be Brian Sheehan who will kick this. Kerry bidding to go back in front again, and it swings in in the breeze and curls brilliantly. Such a good free taker. That was not easy considering the weather conditions this afternoon and the breeze in Kalani. And again, for a right foot of kicker from what we call his wrong side, that was delightfully frightened. Seven minutes to go to half time. We've had one black card, we've had two goals, and we've had a fair degree of excitement. Ken O'Halloran. Well taken by Alan O'Connor. Brilliantly done. Dropped it as he was coming down, however. Keeping his calm was David Moran, linking up with Johnny Buckley, surrounded immediately here. This time the referee decides it was Johnny Buckley who was being fouled. And I think it was a harsh enough call that time. I felt uh, Buckley was being put under legitimate pressure, but uh, the referee saw it differently, and he's the one that counts. Fionn Fitzgerald. David Moran. Fitzgerald again here now, playing it in towards Barry John Key looking to try and make more of an impact in this game going through this is good really good play fisted magnificently over the bar by Barry John Keane doesn't want to be just a, a peripheral player here this afternoon he's injured as he does so but that took daring and a bit of courage here and a bit of dash exactly what we've been looking for in this monster final 
Yeah, Keane, that time he certainly was clinical and decisive the way he took them on. He had no doubts about it, what he wanted to achieve. Very good score. Mark Collins now in that new role for him back, a sweeper. Pa Kelly picking him up here, as you can see. His uh, marker there is Peter Crowley. Pressure on. Barry O'Driscoll, well stopped, comes back out again. Good defending. Really strong defending by Peter Crowley. And Kerry got away with it. Really good opportunity for Cork that time, which they failed to take. Brian Sheehan. Looking right, looking left. Buckley on his shoulder here. Caught in a web then eventually, but then there's a support player and it's Brian Sheehan once more. All the way down along the line here. Killian Young. It was intended for Donaghy, but well read by Owen Cadigan. A quick movement out to Pa Kelly. It's a, a very good match so far. Barry O'Driscoll. Kevin O'Driscoll ready to pick it up here inside his own 65-metre line. Kelly, nothing rushed. They're trying to make each attack count. Having to be patient. A lot of experience in both teams. Michael Shields. 49th championship match today for him Collins back to Shields they're waiting to try and see if there's a gap here are they overdoing it Barry O'Driscoll has Cadigan to his right should he wish to use him decides to be a bit more courageous more adventurous ah he was trying to link up with Donnick O'Connor the idea was good but well read by Stephen O'Brien and now Kerry can counter James O'Donoghue Got a player wide on the left-hand side, totally on Mark Killian Young. Chance to strike here, playing it back in towards a recovered Barry John Keane. And Keane goes for it again and shows his razor-sharp instincts and his deadly finishing two in a row now for the Kerens O'Reilly player. They're great, great scores, it must be said by Keane. Again, the running off the ball by O'Donoghue, though, is causing an awful lot of problems. This is the save here, Martin, just a few seconds ago. Yeah, again, I t you know, great opportunity for a goal. Maybe the ball should have been put a little bit lower. It was made a little bit easier, I suppose, for Keeley, but he showed great awareness and great presence in coming out to block the shot. Suddenly, Barry John Keane has really pressed the acceleration button and he is much more in the game, much more visible, and Kerry are three in front. And looking good, Young in here as far as Barry, James O'Donoghue, and James O'Donoghue kicks it with his left and puts it over. He's got a second. Kerry have scored the last four points now without reply. 1-8 to 1-4, they're in front. Echoes indeed of last year's Munster final when they had a glorious period also coming into halftime. It's now up to Cork to just redouble the effort and not to actually drop their heads. Down into the centre of the target, once again is Alan O'Connor, this time got a knock on to Pa Kelly, fed forward to Mark Collins, and overhit this one, down towards Callum O'Neill. It's very clear what Cork are trying to do, they have Callum O'Neill on a one-to-one -one inside with Mark O'Shea, but in order to exploit O'Shea, the quality of the ball must be better than what we saw that time. Um, Hurley is playing, I think, a little bit too deep because he is better in around the, uh, you know, the, the, the 13 metre line, but he's playing much further out at the moment. Hasn't really been able to exert a big, big influence on the game so far, Brian Hurley. Two minutes to go to half time. Mark O'Shea keeping it away from Donnick O'Connor and Kerry just retained possession now here. Again, nothing hurried. And to be precise about each pass that they make, Crowley, they made the last one. Johnny Buckley turned back and then was caught by Brian O'Driscoll. They already had one player black carded. Free kick for uh, Kerry, which Brian Sheehan is going to take. And he takes his time over all of these free kicks and he gives his players just a moment's respite. Yes, what is noticeable also about Kerry, they're managing to get an extra man over on the stand side of the field all the time coming into attacking positions is causing Cork trouble. And that hasn't been read yet by the Cork backs or Cork management. That's true. Brian Sheehan then, this is 50 metres out from the target. He's got three so far. And uh, this one just proving a little too difficult for him. Missed opportunity. So that's just a fourth wide for Kerry. 
two for Cork so far. Yeah, you made a point earlier, Jared, that when Cork kicked the ball or kicked the ball short from their kickouts, they're struggling to get the ball up the field. They're a little bit slow getting it up the field. And when you have a one-to-one -one up there, I feel you need to get the ball in earlier to the inside forward. Their, their play so far has been cautious, Cork. They haven't really played with an awful lot of pace in their attack, very little, in fact. It's been rather ponderous, and they're under pressure right now from Donica Walsh. And the referee has seen some holding and he's brought the uh, ball in onto the 30-meter line. So it's a simple free in for Kerry. And here's where they can go an ominous five points in front, even though they played against the breeze in the opening 35 minutes. Yeah, and I made the point earlier that Lochery is finding it very difficult to mark O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue was held off the ball that time. And it's not the first time today that Hughes has called for freeze for that, for that reason. Three points in the first half for Barry John Keane, the taker of that last free. We're into the red, as you can see, at the end of this first half. Cork started well. They were level on uh, four occasions, but uh, since their last score, Kerry have simply dominated proceedings here. Five points in a row, unanswered. Line ball, which Barry O'Driscoll is preparing to take down here deep into stoppage time at the end of this first half it's a good ball down to Park Kelly a lot of people were wondering why he didn't start well he's had his injuries Donnick O'Connor kicking trying to give Cork something before half time umpires have a little look at it and decide it did go inside the left hand upright and that's one back for Cork a late late point by Donnick O'Connor his second of this first half cut inside his man there there was no block it was an ambitious kick it was well directed it's 1-9 to 1-5 yeah, very much ambitious. I didn't think actually from this angle that the ball had gone between the posts. But the umpire saw it as it was and it's a point given. It's a big lift for Cork right at the very end, one which they've needed. There's the goal scorer for Kerry after 13 minutes, Kieran Donaghy. It uh, levelled up a goal after nine by Colm O'Neill. Cork did well up to that point, but Kerry had been the better side for the last 15 minutes at half time. Which uh, Brian Cuthbert would have had uh, some thoughts over and uh, his management team trying to counter Kerry's threat. Is there any countering what uh, we've seen over the years from the kingdom? Let's see. Far Kelly. That was a free kick which uh, he's now taken from the incorrect position so he's going backwards instead to Brian O'Driscoll. Well, Kerry will simply be hoping that uh, the way they have played over the last 20 minutes of the first half will be the way they will start this second and it's now up to Cork to see if they can do anything about it. Kevin O'Driscoll, point in the first half, back in here as far as Pa Kelly, getting his hands on the ball time and again, that time in there towards Farley, being held off, the referee has decided, by uh, Donica, Donica Walsh or Shane Enright. I think it was so, Shane Enright that time, and yeah, I think it was. it was a little bit of a harsh call, it must be said. It's a, a free which... Colm O'Neill will take. Didn't look to be an awful lot on. So this should suit O'Neill, who's got a goal and two points in the first half. And this to bring it back to a three point game. That will mean that Cork have got the last two points, one before and one just after half time. Well, indeed, over the half-time break, it must be said, Cork have had the opportunity to regroup. I think it's important that, you know, for the first quarter, that they get, you know, assertive and not show any sort of defeatism to carry. Get back in their faces again. Well, that was marvellously done there by David Moran. Went up strongly. Cross here as far as Fionn Fitzgerald. Taking it up, Brian Sheehan. Fed down quickly to... A man who was in very good form in the first half, Barry John Keane with his three points. James O'Donoghue hoping for a knockdown from the star here. It comes to Stephen O'Brien instead and then back to Donica Walsh. And Donica Walsh pops it over the bar. His first point of the match, it means that five of the six starting forwards now for Kerry have gone among the scores. Yeah, such a familiar route, long high ball into Donaghy. Just has the ball broken off him. Great anticipation by Donica Walsh and a lovely finish. Ken O'Halloran's kick out again is a good one. He was round, roundly criticised last year for the quality of those kick outs, but they've been mostly finding their men today. Mark Collins setting off that first one. Now Pa Kelly. Picked up here by Barry O'Driscoll. Back inside here. Helped into the back 
of the net. It was moving. And it's Dudek O'Connor who was following it in. He was in movement, so he was entitled to hand pass it. Absolutely great composure by O'Connor. He was being pulled back by the jersey. Wonderfully flighted pass into his path. And great kind of presence of mind. Quick thinking. Lovely little flick into the net. What of a start for Cork. 2-6 now to 1-10. 13 points to 12. Kerry still by one. But Kerry, this Kerry defence conceding two goals in the opening 38 minutes. Not exactly the kind of stuff you expect from all Ireland champions. But then there have been questions for quite a long time about the quality of, Cor of Kerry's full back line. And then remember, Ger, in the National League, they conceded nine goals, which was quite a lot in seven games. Shane Enright has the ball taken from him here by Alan O'Connor. Well, if that doesn't give Cork a boost, I don't know what will. A couple of players on the ground, Johnny Buckley and Alan O'Connor. Play continues, and it's picked up here in the end by Pa Kelly. Barry O'Driscoll. It's very much anybody's game at this stage. That goal seems to have turned it around quite considerably. What kind of effect will it have on Kerry? And will Cork be able to profit? Stephen Cronin feeding it through here to Owen Cadigan. Played so much of the league season as a midfielder. Back to Hurley, yet to score today. Kicked long. No Donaghy in there, however. But there is a Kieran O'Driscoll. And in the end, the referee saw some holding. So I was holding on Marco Shea that time as he went up for the ball, called the free out. Again, I thought rather harsh. David Moran on to Barry John Keane. You wonder who's marking him. He's got uh, three points from the first half. Admittedly, one of them was from a free kick, but he's become more and more of an influence in this game. Brian Sheehan now, high up into the air. Donaghy's in after it, but then it doesn't need Donaghy because he wasn't able to get to it. And that's the danger about kicking the ball long, but the wind behind you, it can be sometimes very easy to go over cook the pass. Mark Collins picking up that short kick out. Cadigan has players to his left and to his right. Swings it out here as far as Stephen Cronin, and he goes down. Stephen O'Brien, the one who hold him down, free kick awarded. And the referee wants the... Kerry man to come to him for a moment he's having a word and I think there could be a card here he was feeling frustrated a little earlier on with some decisions that went against him but this time Stephen O'Brien I think has got to be at the receiving end and we'll see a yellow yeah, I'm surprised it was a yellow I felt that was a black card situation I felt he deliberately pulled him down but Paddy Hughes as I said before is the one that makes the calls It's a matter of interpretation, isn't it? We had it last week as well in Croke Park. And this time it heats up here with uh, Owen Cadigan feeling vexed. Kieran Donaghy, the one they're trying to get the ball back from. It's got to be a free kick. Donaghy with that goal after 13 minutes, so important in the first half to set Kerry up. But now they're under pressure. Vinted Gould. Back here to Alan O'Connor, collected it well with his left hand, tries to go by Sheehan, back in towards Pa Kelly. Back out to Hurley this time, trying to wind himself up for the shot from 25 metres. And the referee has decided to bring back the play for an earlier foul, and it's going to be a free kick. Yeah, the referee's been doing this consistently. He's been calling frees for situations where oh, there have been there was a third man tackle there. Yes. And again, a third mount tackle is definitely a black card um, a black card offence. And it's David Moran who's been spoken to by the referee. The colour of the card is uh, going to be of most interest, and he's got the black as well. David Moran goes off black carded, and presumably Anthony Marr will be the first of the substitutes who will come on. He is the obvious sub anyway. Yeah, I know in a lot of situations... Well, Cooper's been prepared. Yes, and I've seen Toddy Hughes twice refereeing games this year. I thought he was excellent in the monaghan Cavan game. I watched him refereeing in Mayo against Galway. And he certainly can be finicky maybe at times, but that definitely he was correct in that situation. It was a body check off the ball, and a black card situation was uh, justified. Mars coming in. Moran, Moran has gone. Free into Cork, which is going to be taken by Colm O'Neill. A goal and... Uh, three points already for him 
and the teams are now level for the fifth time. A goal and four for Colm O'Neill. Actually, Morton will be a big loss to them. I think he's been very, very good at the middle of the field. Now, it must be said in the second half, Alan O'Connor and Finn the goal have started very impressively, but Morton had a very fine first half. And Colm Cooper is in, and that's the big cheer you are hearing. The Gooch. He's played, played in 22 championship matches against Cork, winning 12 and scoring 576 over that long time. Alan O'Connor, back as far as Barry O'Driscoll. Fed across there to Gould. Player has gone off, by the way, as Stephen O'Brien. Cork come again. Played in by Kelly. Hurley now trying to contain this one under pressure. Line ball. That's clever play by Hurley that time. Just going back to Cooper coming in. Um, it surprises me in one in one sense that Stephen Cronin has been asked to mark him. Cronin being the most ex inexperienced player on the Cork team. That may change in a little while. You never know. Cork yet to adjust maybe to that, but that's the way it is at the present time. A 19-year-old against one of the greats of Gaelic football. Kicked in dangerously, Alan O'Connor waiting in there, fisted out, however, by Brian Sheehan. Reacting quickest for it here is Colm O'Neill, getting it on the left and thundering this one in and over the crossbar. 1-5 for Colm O'Neill. I know it's only 10 minutes gone in the second half, but you can hear the cork roll, it's primal, and it's maybe, you know, resonating a certain amount of relief but, and revenge, but certainly it's been a great start to the second half Cork, by Cork. Cork by one. Problems now for Eamon Fitzmaurice to adjust to. He has the players on the bench at the start of this, the subs there that he had between them, their 22 All-Ireland medals. Brian Hurley would love to have one. Mark Collins back here once again, carried on here by Delico O'Connor. What a great campaigner has been over the years and loves to play against Kerry. Lives on the boundary between the two counties. Back it comes here to Colm O'Neill, who's hot all of a sudden. Back to Kevin O'Driscoll, kicking from the edge of the D and putting it over the bar. Point in each half. Cork flying. Kerry in a little minor crisis at this stage. Very much in a minor crisis, but once again, the architect of that score is Colm O'Neill. A wonderful piece of composure on the ball, patient on the ball. Whittley got the opening to give it to Driscoll. That's a great score, great start by Cork. Oh, what an atmosphere here, Ger. Remember, his team were favourites to win 12 months ago and flopped badly. Today, they're seeking to atone. Kerry, the champions, will not want to give up their title against their great old rivals. Long, long way to go. Mark Collins, Pa Kelly. Well, right now it's Kerry who are being beaten. All ends up in the middle of the park. They can't get their hands on the ball, and they're waiting for Cork to make a mistake. Barry O'Driscoll powering through. O'Driscoll! They've got another one, three in a row. Fabulous score by Barry O'Driscoll that time. Again, a poor kick out by Keeley on the other side. But that composure by Cork that I've spoken about, working the ball patiently across the field, that's some start, that's a wonderful score by Adriska. Well, in the second half so far, Kerry with just one point to show for it, and we're 11 and a half minutes into the half, and they've lost it in midfield again to Alan O'Connor. Cork have rolled up the sleeves, and they are really setting to the task. Brian Hurley. Trying to take on his man, Shea Man Rye, two against him. Bundled out of it eventually, you see, no. Goes down over the football, and the referee says he handled it on the ground. Free out against Brian Hurley and Cork. But right at this stage in the afternoon, it's Kerry who are needing the lift, and they're going to get it very shortly now with the introduction of Darren O'Sullivan. Yeah, Darren on O'Sullivan. Comes. Yeah, coming in for Johnny Buckley, and you know, at half-time, Ger, we wondered whether Cork were capable of mounting a credible challenge, and you said to me at the time that they would regroup, and by God, they have. Into the middle of the park here. It's Anthony Marr. Well, ten and a half minutes nearly since Kerry's last score. Doesn't happen in Killarney very often, but Brian Sheehan 
will settle a nerve or two if this one goes over, and he's done exactly that. Great score by Brian Sheehan, his fourth of the match, the first one to come from play, and he's made it to 111, 14 points. Corks 2 10, 16, caught by two. Yes, and Alan O'Connor, who has started very impressively, you know, in terms of going forward and winning a ball at the middle of the field, just dropped his concentration momentarily that time. Sheehan exploited that, got forward, struck it beautifully from a difficult angle. Ken O'Halloran's kick out here, and he takes an extra moment or two. I'm not sure if the ball fell off the tee or not. Referee calling out instructions. Finally, it is kicked out. Towards Finton Gould, didn't get to it. Jonathan Lyon does for Kerry. Killian Young. Donica Walsh now. Too long this time for James O'Donoghue. Lockery gets there first. Mark Collins hand passing it out here as far as Brian O'Driscoll. And the O'Driscolls from the Tyg McCory club playing well for Cork. Pa Kelly was an option, but he gives it back to the security of Barry O'Driscoll instead. Cork hold on to it, hold on to their two-point lead. Nearly 14 minutes into the second half, and that is a high challenge this time by Kieran Donaghy, and he could be in trouble if the referee decides it wasn't clumsy but intentional. Is it going to be a yellow? Well, it's yellow or black. It must be says a high tackle. I thought it was dangerous that time. Yellow card gets a yellow card, stays on the park. Yeah, the word deliberate is a key word in the whole thing of issuing a black card, and I don't think that tackle was deliberate. It was more awkward than than anything else. The black card, of course, makes it very hard for the referee because he's the arbiter. Kicked in here dangerously down to Colm O'Neill, and O'Neill somehow finds the dexterity to somehow align his feet and put that one over the bar. That was a very, very difficult kick to make. Look at the way he was coming across here, beat him and the back, and then somehow swung it over. A goal and six. Wonderful anticipation once more by Colm O'Neill. Paul Kelly, Cork are absolutely lording it at midfield, and they're giving their players inside the platform now to make life very, very awkward for Kerry, but this time... Donico O'Connor goes down on the ball, holds on to it, and the free is going to be against him once we get the ball back. Yes, he's just a little bit indecisive at that time, a little bit hesitant, was going to get the ball out to his right, but immediately it turned inside, he ran into traffic, and again, correct, you know, the referee correctly, he conceded the free. Paul Ganey is coming on for Barry John Keane. He wasn't able to sustain the excellent work in the first half. And Paul Ganey is in, and he's uh, welcomed to the contest by Michael Shields. A man who got a goal in the opening minutes of the All-Ireland final last year against Danny Gaul. Anthony Marr. Basically, the big names have come in, or most of them. That's dropped there by Brian O'Driscoll, but straight away there's players around him. Cork are playing with a kind of unity of purpose that's been absent in some of the big matches of late. Beaten twice by Dublin in league finals, beaten out the gate by Kerry last year in the Munster final. Right now they're in charge of this, and Colm O'Neill swings it onto the left. Did somebody tell us that he wasn't playing terribly well in the first time? Well, he certainly upped his game. A goal and six, that didn't quite make it. Kerry come back. Colm Cooper's back there, he sent it short to Alan O'Connor, playing a little bit of soccer with it. Picked up in the end, however, by Peter Crowley. Quick look up, nobody picking up the run of Donica Walsh. They were all back marking space. One man to aim at inside, that is the big star. Coming on to it almost near the uh, large square was James O'Donoghue, and the referee is going to give the decision here, inside or outside. Penalty. Oh, that's a big call by Paddy Hughes that time, I must have said, let's just see this in replay. Ball comes in, and oh, there was a 50-50 ball, that's a hard enough call on the defender. Broken that time, and I think it hits Mark, uh, uh, they Mark, forward, Collins. Mark Collins pulled him down. But he, okay, he pulled him by the tocks, I think, that time. And I think maybe on second viewing, it was a penalty, but a tough call. It gives Kerry a golden opportunity now as the referee goes in to discuss this with his umpires. He's made the call already, so is he just considering which kind of card he's going to dish out if he is going to dish one out, which would be harsh. 2-11 to 1-11. 
You know, we see situations in that, in, you know, that type of situation on so many occasions going unpunished, but that is a harsh call at a critical stage of the match when Cork are three points ahead. Ken O'Halloran waits. And it will be James O'Donoghue, the player involved in that with Mark Collins, who got the call his way. Cork fans don't agree with it. Kerry fans will be elated if this hits the back of the net. He's got nine championship goals to his credit. This is his 20th championship game. The Footballer of the Year 2014 and the 2015 Munster Final against Ken O'Halloran. This to level the match. 53 minutes gone. Back of the net. Brilliantly taken. With pace and with power. Kept nice and cool. Took his chance. And Kerry are level. Oh, that's exemplary, right into the corner. Goalkeeper maybe made it a little bit easier for him by, you know, selling himself the other way. But great composure by O'Donoghue, wonderfully stuck penalty. But I feel myself again, it was a harsh ball. Now we're in for a really exciting last quarter of this monster final. Nondescript at times, I know, in the past. But today, both teams are really going for it. Sometimes it's the much maligned Munster Championship. Two teams have dominated over the years, but these two teams today are game, and they're having a decent contest. Finter Gould, back in here to Mark Collins. Who's going to win it? Beautifully in as far as Colm O'Neill again. O'Neill looking for space here, trying to get away from the attentions of Enright. Losing him finally, but the angle was getting difficult and very difficult. And a wickedly difficult angle in the end, confronted Callum O'Neill, put it wide. That's very, very good, defending by, uh, by Enright that time, very disciplined, kept pushing him out towards the corner, and again, put, made the angle too difficult for him to execute the score. Kerry's turn to come on attack now. Mark O'Shea, great ball. Oh, what accuracy. You know who is back. Colin Cooper. Lovely ball by Mark O'Shea to pick him out there. That was precision. Absolutely brilliant. And Kerry lead 2-12 to 2-11. Well, certainly the reek shook with that score. What about a Kerry row for that lovely struck point by Cooper. But the accuracy of the kick pass was just a joy to behold. Brian O'Driscoll. Now it's up to Cork to try and come back and answer that. Fintered Gould. Looking for players to come from a deep position. One of them is Stephen Cronin here. Turning around again to try and feed it forward under intense pressure. And this time, ball player goes down. That's Pa Kelly. He was fouled. And the referee brings the ball forward 13 metres because Kerry protested. Mark O'Shea leading the protest. It's going to be an easier kick now. Cork of a player on the deck. Yeah, I think it's Paddy Kelly on the deck. He seems in a little bit of trouble at the moment. Um, he's been very impressive since he has come in, actually got through a side of work, linking up play very well, holding up the ball at times, but I just think he's been impressive. Had he to go off, it would be a big loss to Cork. Again, the uh, referee has made the call and uh, having a word or two there with Mark O'Shea, continuing the debate as to whether that was a, a free kick. Certainly, Kerry didn't think it was, but the referee has made his decision. Cork fans I think very, very happy with the quality of the performance so far. But quality is one thing. They want a victory. First time in 20 years in Killarney against the champs. This to try and level up the game. And there will still be some 13 minutes to play. Donegal O'Connor with a goal and two so far. His goal coming in the second half. From just outside the 20-meter line. Doesn't miss those teams level for the seventh time. Yeah, and talk about the, the way the game is going. Territorially, Cork have had much the better, but Kerry have had only sporadic attacks uh, since the start, second half started. But every time they've gone up, they've been very clinical. Anthony Marr down here. One which is well taken by Paul Gainey. Kicking to score. And to put Kerry back in front again. There's no stopping them, as you say, Martin. When they are under pressure, down they come, get possession, 
and then strike it like that. Last time it was Cooper, this time it's Ganey from their All-Ireland winning team of recent years. Yeah, but as I said, you're so efficient, so economical, minimum effort in that. Just a beautifully struck ball from distance. Advantage carry again. Mark Collins again picking out Alan O'Connor. How important he has been and how important the decision was by the management to invite him back in. Tower of strength in the middle of the park, likewise, Pa Kelly. No, I'm not sure what that call is for uh, by Potty Hughes. I think. I don't know which way it's going, either the way he's pointing, you think it's a carry free, but I think it's... A, um, I think he wants the ball brought back to the correct position. I think that's what it is, yeah. Yeah, a little bit confusing. Just one Cork sub introduced so far, that's Pa Kelly. They have the likes of uh, Goulding to bring in here, to most Clancy, some of the younger players, as Colm O'Driscoll as well, and Donald Oak Hodnett. Right now they're content with the 15 they have on the park right now. And it's Mark Collins. That's a very difficult one for Kevin O'Driscoll to go chasing after. Wasn't going to win that there with Jonathan Lyon. Puts in the boot at the end and commits the foul against uh, Anthony Marr. Yeah, when Vanny Kelly was taking that uh, free kick, there was very little movement off the ball. He needed somebody actually to hit. I thought he might have gone long with it, actually. 19 coming in is Connor Dorman. So he's on, and the player going off is Stephen Cronin. Yeah, for all his rawness and experience, I think Cronin had a quite a good game up to now, but fresh legs are needed, there's no doubt about that. With 11 minutes to play. Sunshine in Killarney, a huge crowd, around about 35,000, waiting to see who's going to win it. And straight away, it's Dorman who comes across here, shoulders Sean Fitzgerald. Line ball to Cork. Kerry leading by a point. Brian Hurley, who hasn't scored today. Darren O'Sullivan putting in the challenge. Hurley comes. Slipping it forward here to Kelly, trying to transfer it quickly there to Connor Dorman. who's a half-back, really. Back to Hurley, so they start again from around about the 45-metre line. Back into the tireless Donnick O'Connor. Gets through an immense amount of work this time, looks weary. It looks weary, Jern. I thought that time when Hurley gave the ball, he didn't go up and support as he should have. And just going f f further back, they, they wait on the pass that could have put Hurley in, I think, was very, very poor. But Hurley looks quite exhausted also. Coming on here now is uh, Jack Sherwood. That's number 25. Number nine, the Jack Sherwood. So Sherwood's coming in for Brian Sheehan. That means both midfielders have been replaced, David Moran because of a black card. Number 21 coming in here for Cork is Rory Dean. Good to see him back. Out for in for Finton Gould. So one sub has been made and uh, Daniel Goulding, if he is to come in, hasn't made an appearance on the park just yet. Killian Young. Oh, what a good transfer this is, and it's Jack Sherwood just in. Kerry looking to add to their advantage. Sherwood. They've been given a very, very tough match this afternoon. Donica Walsh. They open up that cork defence, and finally it's fisted over the bar by big Anthony Marr. Kerry by two. And the two substitute it was who made that. Sure, with great composure, head up. And that's a feature of the Kerry attackers. Their heads are up all the time, looking for the man in possession, or looking for the man in better position. And once again, Donica Walsh involved in that move. So two points the margin as Donica O'Connor, weary and all that he is, has made way. And he's replaced by Daniel Goulding. Goulding, of course, perhaps the star of the... 2010 All-Ireland victory over Down that afternoon with his great kicking ability but Amit Fitzmaurice has seen his team now settle to the challenge and with just uh, nine minutes to go or a little under of the 70 they're in the driving seat certainly two ahead and yes we go back to the penalty Gerard that was the key moment in the match Mark Collins holds on to it Cork have it all to do once again Michael Shields carry forward here to Pa Kelly 
He's been involved in so much good football this afternoon for Cork since his introduction for Paul Kerrigan, who was black carded in the first half. Now Daniel Goulding must have been frustrated sitting on the bench. Now is his chance to try and rescue this for Cork. Still time in which to do it. Hurley crossover here to Barry O'Driscoll. On his shoulder was Brian O'Driscoll, his namesake. Unable to go by Donica Walsh. And the Cork fans, I think, a little frustrated that he's bringing the ball back the wrong way. Mark Collins. And they go even deeper. Older habits. But then they are trying to be patient and trying to look for the perfect opening. But there's not very much movement ahead. Michael Shields having to go himself. Waiting to slip it in now. Here's a chance. Driscoll scores! The patience worked out. And Barry O'Driscoll has kicked his first ever championship goal in the 64th minute. And amazingly, Cork have got a third and they slip into the lead. Fantastic goal. I thought they were going nowhere that time. They were over and back. You know, aimless kind of attacking. But that time, great support play and beautifully finished. But Shields, to be fair to him, took on the responsibility, drove at the carry defence, gave the pass. And what a finish. What a finish indeed. 3-12. That's 21 points. 2-14. That's 20. Kerry behind by one. Cork ahead. Their fans delighted. And Cork have been the better team in the second half, it must be said, Ger. Territorially, they've been on top. I thought, to be honest with you, with that last attack, they were, Cork were going nowhere. There was very little movement. But again, Shields just drifted up imperceptibly nobody tagging him and next thing drove at them took it on him said to do it and great score well we're listening to people at half time telling us this game was predictable and uh, had a predictable conclusion <laughs> well we were but you said to me off camera when we were having a bottle of water i think it must have been the water that got to us you said cork will regroup maybe it's the red blood that's in you or the red yellow blood. cards for brian hurley and for uh, killian young Kerry now bring in another one of their subs. Looks to be Paul Murphy from the distance. And the player going off anyway is Peter Crowley. I think it's uh, Paul Murphy. Certainly his shape it is. That's six subs introduced by Kerry. Five minutes to go. In danger of losing their monster crown. The loser here would be possibly in a future matchup with Dublin at a quarter-final stage if all things panned out as were expected. The winner could be facing an Ulster Championship semi-final if they get beyond the quarter-finals. It's a long way ahead right now. It's about victory. Four and a half to go. Caught by one. Not so long ago they were behind. And that time it's a little bit of frustration on the part of Paul Ganey. Yes, Kerry are finding it very hard to get their hands on the ball at the moment. Cork, if they don't go too defensive, I think can see that this game through. If uh, Kerry get the ball down quickly out of their defence, if they win it back, James O'Donoghue was on a one-and-one one with James Lockery, and there is no support player anywhere near Lockery. But right now, it's Barry O'Driscoll. Man who got that third goal after 64 minutes. Alan O'Connor. Now that could be deemed to be intentional it depends how the referee reads it certainly it was a clumsy shoulder the referee is reaching for his notebook i think it was more a menacing gesture than a malicious one but o'connor that time for an experienced player silly just charged into donica walsh and to be fair to donica walsh he bounced off didn't make a big meal of it alan o'connor moves back into his position to pick up his man who is big anthony marr colin o'driscoll on as well number 24 on for Hurley. Kerry need to find something here now. And they may get it from Paul Ganey. Dropping it in there. Breaks down dangerously. Oh, wide. It's touched the defender. It's a 45. Paul Ganey. Again, the same situation. High ball in. Wonderful anticipation by Ganey. Just watch it here. Gets the ball. And I don't know, I think it was Ken O'Halloran got his hands to that, but it's a 45 results, but that was a wonderful opportunity for a goal. Somehow it stayed out of the cork net. 
and they're still clinging on to their one-point advantage. 45 coming up. Here's an opportunity for Kerry to draw level. Yeah, but their main long-range kicker is on the sideline at this stage. I think it's Donahue that's taking on the responsibility of it. Had he been on the field, I would have expected Brian Sheehan to take this. As I said, this is a massive kick. Eamon, Eamon Fitzmaurice, I think, expected a really, really tough match from Cork. He knew that last year wasn't necessarily a reflection of Brian Cuthbert's team. A much maligned team, he called it in interviews over the past week. There's Pat Flanagan alongside him, the trainer of the team, who used to be with Kerry. Can Kerry draw level here? James O'Donoghue kicking the 45. Up into the air it goes, but it's not on its way over the bar. It's gone wide instead. And that is wide number six, only the second wide by Kerry in the second half. And the decision to take off Brian Sheehan may now come back to really hit Kerry. There was no real belief in that kick whatsoever. There was, he took two paces to hit the ball and didn't follow through whatsoever with the kick and consequently didn't get it right. It's fumbled in the air by Sherwood, comes back to Cork. Alan O'Connor to his left-hand side, to Kevin O'Driscoll. 90 seconds of the 70 minutes still to be played. That's Colm O'Driscoll. All three O'Driscolls on the park right now. Proud moment for their dad, Gene, who's been associated with uh, O'Donovan Rossa in Skibbereen and a club founded by their grandfather, Sonny. Here's Colm once again from the Tyg McCorricks club to his brother, Kevin. Back here to Barry O'Driscoll, member of the clan, holding the ball. Colm O'Driscoll comes again here. Sherwood can't get in a challenge, and that's a, a challenge there on the court man. Referee eventually blows his whistle as Pa Kelly goes down. It's got to be a free in. Well, I thought the free in came initially. I thought he was tripped, and Pa Kelly to me has been just wonderful in that match, in this match rather. He has given so much effort, intelligent work any time he's got on the ball. Now he's playing in a full forward situation, but well, that was a huge free to earn on his part. One of the things which our panel said at the beginning of uh, this transmission is that Cork had the players, same as Kerry, but they didn't always produce. Today, in the second half, they are producing, and there are going to be two minutes of added time. Cork have a chance of stretching their lead to two points. This is... Colm O'Neill is going to take it. It's really not an easy kick for a left footer. Dr. Con Murphy in the background, the team, medical officer looking. Will he try and put it over from here, or will he try and send it in? Because he's got Alan O'Connor in there in front of the goal, waiting. Alan O'Connor goes for it. Got the fist to it, and it's gone off a defender. Donaghy protesting, but it didn't. It's a perfect result for Cork. It didn't take another minute to get that ball, or to take the 45. Kieran Donaghy is convinced that it wasn't a 45. But look, it, it seems in that case that uh, Don, he got his hand to it, so 45 is the correct call. The narrowest of margins between these two great rivals. Whoever got the last touch to it, it's a 45. And we're into the two minutes of stoppage time and about another minute 20 to be played. Colm O'Neill has got a goal and six. He can put it over and put two between them. They call it a dangerous lead, but Kerry will have it all to do. They don't do anything there because it goes straight to Kieran Donaghy. And now there must be a quick counter-attack by the champions. Marr just about reached Darren O'Sullivan, a risky crossfield pass. Mark O'Shea, well, what a lose to Cork. Darren O'Sullivan's off again, this time grounded by Colombo Driscoll, and that could be regarded as intentional as well, but the referee has... Uh, decided yes it's a black card for Colombo Driscoll it was intentional correctly gets the black card and there's two men down below us knocking lumps out of each other Paul Ganey and Michael, Michael Shields, Shields yep. they've decided to stop the boxing O'Driscoll's well, got to go and spend the last few seconds over on the bench having been only on for about uh, I suppose two minutes second black card issued to a core player the first was Paul Kerrigan well, you remember in the semi-final replay in Limerick last year, in the last couple of minutes when Kerry got involved with Mayo, you know, ran the clock down. Cork are doing exactly the same at the moment with Kerry today. Two yellow cards, Paul Ganey and Michael Shields. We've just about played the two minutes of stoppage time. But surely the referee will add enough time for Kerry to have another chance of trying to get an equaliser. One behind. They've got to carry the ball downfield. We're now beyond the two minutes but it's usual for the referee to allow play to continue until an attack breaks down. 
Donica Walsh, Cork defending. They get it out to Fionn Fitzgerald. Will he be the hero? Will he save their bacon? He's done it! The level! What a Fionn score! Fitzgerald! Incredible, Jared. On Mike Clock, it was 37 minutes left, 20 seconds gone. Or oh, they were on a tie, but as you said, he gave that few seconds extra. Just Fitzgerald had the belief to go and take that on. That's courage, that's bottle, that balls from Fitzgerald. And the referee is just telling the goalkeeper, Ken O'Halloran, to kick it out. He's going to blow the whistle. It's all over. They finish level. History repeats itself. This referee, Paddy Hughes, was here as well back in 2010. Then it finished level, and it's done the same today. And the managers, Eamon Fitzmaurice and Brian Cuthbert, shake hands. So much to talk about. I mean, goals that were gifted in the first half, penalties that were dodgy in the second, and a lot of really good play. Kerry put to the pin of their collar to try and mount to try and stay with this cork challenge brian cuthbert will be very very proud of his charges but it wasn't good enough they didn't win the title they'll have to do it all again and the full-time score here in fitzgerald stadium killarney it's Kerry 215 cork 312